Looking to build your own bow hunting arrows? We'll take you through the process of how we build ours. Stick with us. Okay, before we get to cutting our arrow shafts, we want to spin these shafts to see which end of the arrow needs to be cut. And so these particular shafts are from Sirius. They're the Sirius Vulcan 300 spine, and we are not promoting one arrow shaft over the other. This just happens to be the shaft that we're working on today. And so to spin your arrows, you need some type of spin tester. This particular one is from Pine Ridge. I think it probably cost, you know, 20 or $25 or so. Spins really well, but one thing you need to be aware of is these little wheels inside up here do move back and forth laterally somewhat. And so when you're spinning your shafts, um, you don't want to watch that part. You just want to watch the end, the end of your shaft, because that's the, that's what's going to tell you if you've got a wobbly end. If you get to staring at these rollers too much and watching the overall uh, movement of those, it could throw you off. So let's just watch the end when we spin this. That end is spinning pretty true. A little bit difficult to see on camera. And we'll flip it over on this end, which will be our, typically be our knock end. We'll spin that. That one actually looks like it might even be spinning a little bit better. So what we'll do is we'll cut from this end. We'll make a mark on this shaft with a Sharpie or some other marking to let us know that's the end we're gonna cut on. And then we will cut these arrows. Now, after you cut your shafts to length, there's an important step that can be often overlooked, and that is you need to square the ends, um, both ends of your arrow shaft. Because when you put in those inserts and put in the lighted knocks or standard knocks into these shafts, they need to be flush with the end of this shaft so that you can have the best possible arrow flight. And so what you can do is take a Sharpie of a different color. It's going to be difficult to see because this is a black arrow shaft. But uh, just take a Sharpie that's another color and mark right around the top edge of that shaft. And then you can take a squaring tool to sand the ends of that shaft. There are several companies out there that make squaring tools. This particular one is from Carbon Express. It's made to go into a drill, but you don't necessarily have to have a drill. You don't have to take off a lot. Um, if you've, if you've cut your shafts fairly square, there's, there's not a lot that you need to take off of here, but you just insert the tool into the shaft and you turn. And you want to sand that shaft end until all of that marker is gone. And that's how you'll know that the end of that shaft has been squared. And then you'll see when you're done, you can see the residue that it leaves left over. And that's because you know, you've sanded that off of the end. So really important, make sure you square both ends of your shaft after they're cut so that you can have the best possible arrow flight. And now we're just gonna take um, a Q-tip with a little bit of acetone or fingernail polish remover. And we're just gonna clean the inside of the front of that shaft to clean it out of any dust and debris because we have also squared the ends of our shaft and sanded it down a little bit so that we can make sure that our insert is flush. So we'll just make sure we clean that really good. And now we are ready. We have a 150 grain insert that we're gonna insert into the end of our shaft. And so it'll fit in there just like that, but we've gotta get a little bit of adhesive to do that. So we're gonna use some Cool Melt here and we're gonna put it on this shaft and insert it into our shaft. Now we have inserted a field point into the end of this insert because this is gonna get a little bit warm when we start putting it into the flame so that we can melt the cool melt on there. And this will allow us to hold to the end of it and be able to insert it easily into our shaft. So 
we're just going to warm up this in the start a little bit. It's going to take just a minute for the heat to run through there. And once we do that, we will start touching the cool melt to that insert. And you can see it just melts on there. We never have to put the cool melt into the flame. Now, we can just take the insert and put it into the shaft and just twist the shaft. There we have it. And now we will rinse this under cold water. You can even put it into a cup of cold water. and It'll cool the shaft down real quickly and also cool that glue. All right, we're gonna put on one of our N1 Outdoors Intune Aero Wraps. And what we, the reason we came up with these is because we found that in the knock tuning process, you can turn a quarter of a turn and pretty much get to where you need to be as far as getting your spine in the right position for optimal aero flight when you're bare shaft tuning through paper. But uh, we found that really an eighth of a turn uh, works a little better for fine tune adjustments. So, that's what we've got. We've got eight positions on this arrow wrap that will let us uh, easily mark and keep track of where we are in the knock tuning process and, and which position worked the best when we were shooting and be able to go back to that if we need to just by referencing the number. I've also got a way to uh, mark which arrow it is. A lot of people don't like to, to do a lot of writing on their arrows and so you can just make a small dot with a sharpie uh, on which arrow you are tuning, that way you can easily go back and reference and know which arrow shot the best and maybe make a notation, you know, arrow two shot the best at the sixth position. So a handy little tool for you to use uh, during the knock tuning, bare shaft tuning through paper process. All right, we're gonna apply our arrow wrap to our bare shaft here, and we're just gonna uh, line up the end of the shaft with the end of the arrow wrap, or as you know, fairly close to it. And what we're using here is this is just a cushioned hot pad. You can get these anywhere. A mouse pad also works great, but just something that has a little bit of give to it because we're gonna roll this shaft across the aero wrap. And when we do, we want there to be a little give so that we can get some good adhesion to the bare shaft. So we're just gonna line this, the edge of this shaft up with the edge of the label. Get it as close as we can so that we can see that we're even. And then we're just gonna slowly roll this shaft, we're going to push down and apply even pressure and we're going to roll this shaft like this until we've got adhesion with that wrap. There we go. Okay, we are ready to insert the knock into the end of our shaft. So we're going to take our shaft that we've wrapped and we're going to put the knock into the end. It's pretty simple. Uh, we know many of you don't use lighted knocks, but if you're filming, it's kind of a necessary thing. Um, and you know, even if you hate tail weight, as we've already mentioned, um, it's a little bit of a necessary evil if you're filming. So uh, this particular uh, nocturnal knock weighs about 25 grains. So we are adding 25 grains to the end of our arrow, and so. We talked a little bit about how that can affect FOC. Um, when you're done with this process, if you like to know simply and easily and quickly the FOC of your arrow, we've got an FOC calculator on our website. It's interactive and very easy to use, and we'll leave a link to it in the comments below so you can check that out. So this arrow will be ready to bear shaft. And we're gonna do that. That's part of the process that we will do before we put our fletchings on. And we'll have another video about how to bear shaft paper tune. Um, but we'll go to the next step now for the sake of this video, which is putting fletchings on your arrow. Okay, so I've finished uh, paper tuning, knock tuning this arrow. And it shoots best on number one. 
So you can see I've got the hole with the lighted knock lined up with the number one right there. And so we want to make sure when we fletch our arrow that we fletch our knock arrow, which for me is uh, vein up from my rest. I want to make sure I fletch the arrow with that vein right along this spine right here for the best flight. So we are using a Bitsenberger jig. Uh, there are lots of different jigs out there, some good quality jigs. This one uh, has just been around, time tested. This is the jig we have and we're gonna fletch with a left helical. So we'll get on to showing you how to do that part. Okay, so we've got our shaft down here in the jig. Now remember, I said that we wanted to make sure that we fletch uh, the arrow in such a way so that the spine is pointing up when we knock this arrow on our bow. And so for my particular rest, I need the arrow uh, knock fletch pointing up. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna twist this here so that I can make sure the fletch lines up with that mark that I have made. I don't know if you can see that mark, but there's a little black mark right there. I'm gonna make sure that the fletch lines up with that. That way I can have this properly positioned in my bow when I go to knock it. Okay, so we're getting ready to fletch our arrow here. We're gonna be using the tack veins, the 2.75 inch. And I've got my Bitsenberger jig right here. And you can see I've made a little black mark right here. This is so that we can make sure that we make sure every vein has the same positioning on the shaft. So I know that I want my veins this far up the shaft from the knocking point. So I'll seat it in there like that. Then I will take tack vein primer pin, which is like this right here. And I'm gonna make sure that it's dispensing properly. Just dab it here on this cloth. And once I see that it is, I'm gonna run that pin up and down this crease to clean that surface. Once I do that, now I'm ready for the glue. And I'm just gonna take the glue, put a bead all the way up and down this crease. And once we do that, we're ready to apply it to the shaft. We just can seat it down here on the bottom. And a little magnetic piece that holds this in place. Press this down on the shaft. And we're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure to both the jig and the shaft for just a few seconds. And once we do that, we'll let go. We're gonna let this sit for about five minutes or so. Okay, that fletching should be finished. So now we're just gonna remove the clamp. Let's see if we've got our fletch on there. We're gonna rotate it one turn. And then we're gonna do the same process all over again. We're gonna do this two more times. Okay, we have finished fletching our arrow. But before we're finished here with this part, we wanna take our glue and we wanna put a bead of glue at the tip of the fletching on both ends. And that'll help secure that fletching to the shaft. So now we've got an arrow that we have cut. We have sanded the and squared the ends of the shafts. We've put in the inserts and our knocks. 
We bare shaft paper tuned and knock tuned it. We fletched it and we finished off our fletchings with a spot of glue on both ends. And now this arrow is ready to send down range. Now we know some of you may like to use fobs instead of fletchings. The fob guys are great. They've got a great product. It's the same concept with the wrap. You'll just put the fob over the wrap. And insert your knock. And you'll still wanna make sure that uh, wherever your line mark was on your wrap lines up with a little opening here in the knock or if you don't have an opening that you've made a little mark that you can also line up with that line. 